Welcome along guys, we're out on the Duke, watch it pussy, we're out on the Duke for perhaps, well I know it's the last time, this is the last time I'm going to ride this bike and that does make me sad but there's a reason for this video, I've had this bike one year, why am I using hand signals, that's too much to the 500, I've had this bike for one year now, more or less exactly one year, this video is all about that one year ownership experience of the beautiful Super Duke. So, as some of you may know who follow me on a bit of social media, on Instagram and the like, I, I'm, I've decided this bike is going. Now I'll get into why at the end of the video, but I think it'll be no surprise to some based on my <laughs> the last GSXR gushy video I did. So I love this bike. This is not going to be a KTM kicking video. That this bike has been exactly as I thought it would when buying a Super Duke One. This is a 2014 Super Duke One. This has now covered 12,000 miles. It had. 8,000, 7,500 miles when I purchased it a year ago. So I've not done that many miles on it, but I've done a big Spain trip on it. I've done a lot of thrashing around the, the English countryside on it. This is a 2014 model, so it's you know it's getting on a little bit now. It, it's out of warranty. What has gone wrong with this? I know one of the big things people say, oh, KTM's, oh, they're unreliable. Every time I see someone think, I'm thinking of buying a Super Duke, but I'm worried about reliability. It comes up every time, every time in the comments and on the various forums I'm on. And I, I've had, I've had a few minor issues with this. So let, let's start with the what's gone wrong. Two things, two things have gone wrong. Two very minor things. First of all, on the kickstand, there's a little nipple, a little bolt, a little bolt that plugs in that screws into it which helps you find the kickstand and put it down. Well, that has fallen out and got lost. So if you remember my Spain trip, I struggled to get the, the centre stand down, the centre stand, the side stand down all the time. Every time I pulled up, one had to put it down for me. That's because the bolt fell out, the standard bolt. You used to be able to buy those separately. They now you have to buy a complete kickstand, which is, I think it's about 150 quid. So I just put in a normal, I think it's an M8 bolt in it. So mine's running a stainless steel M8 bolt in the side stand. A minor thing, but if you lose it, it's a bit annoying. The other thing which has gone wrong with this, and this may have been fixed with the Super Duke 2, I am not sure, but the rear light cluster, where it bolts onto the bike, it's got like a two, two bolts that stick through. Well, they've cracked and the rear light waggles around a little bit. So you've had to change the bolts on it, put some rubber cushions on it just to mount it properly. It's just the vibrations has, has broken away the tail light on one of the mounts. And again, that's a common thing with the Super G. You'll find most of them like that. And that is it. <laughs> that is my two only issues with this bike for a year of ownership. I'd say that's pretty damn good. Everything else works like a peach. The thing with this bike is it is fantastic out on the open road, clear roads, no traffic, gunning it. It works like an absolute gem and it's a lot of fun. Constant wheelies. I could do fourth gear clutch up wheelies at about 80 miles an hour on this. It is insane the amount of fun you can have on this bike. It's just a brute. It's an absolute brute. It's all about the engine. You know, a 1300cc V-twin. This is tuned. We'll talk about the mods on this in a little bit, but this is tuned up. This is a monster. A beast. <laughs> this certainly lives up to its name, this bike. Absolutely does. But that's great. When you're gunning it, you're going fast, you've got your hooligan head on, and you've got the traffic in clear roads. It's probably unbeatable for the smiles per mile on this, but get it in town, get it in traffic, and that's when it becomes hard work. And the little niggles I've mentioned before, like the clutch feel is very spongy, in and out of gears and low down the rev range is clunky. You have to blip it precisely as you do down changes. This is in town I'm talking about. 
it makes it hard, it's hard work to ride in town. It takes a lot of concentration to ride this slowly and smoothly is the important thing. I mean, it's a great big 1300cc thumper. It's hard to make that sort of bike smooth. It's great when you're caning it, but it's let down a little bit by the suspension in that scenario. The suspension, you feel a little bit detached. The front, you don't get a great deal of feedback from the front the front wheel really and the suspension the front and rear suspension seems to work differently to each other so if a little bit out of tune it it shifts a lot of weight off the front to the back and to the rear shock and there's a big transition as you're going on and off the power which unsettles the bike a little bit so great as it is for hooning you have to be very committed with the handling you have to just you have to just push it in and know that it's going to grip because you've got very little feedback. And I've even had this suspension revalved by KTEC, which has improved it dramatically. But compared to the GSXR, when you're pushing on, it's just not sharp enough. So the engine, fantastic. Oh, it's a monster. Let down a little bit by the hat, the, the, the niggles, the niggles. Also the brakes, it's got this M50 setup up front, which you would imagine would be phenomenal. Bikes like the Tawono, the Street Triple with the M50s, the brakes are absolutely gorgeous on it. But this, they're, they're a bit spongy, you have to really pull the lever, they don't bite well enough. Now that could be due to the suspension, that's all I can really put it down to. It's got a Brembo master cylinder. Admittedly, not the MCS top of the line one, but it's got a Brembo master cylinder. You could probably improve it by upgrading the master cylinder, I suspect. But I suspect a lot of it is down to the suspension. Just, you know, just compressing too much and not giving, not standing up to the braking force as well enough. Other things I love about this bike is the quality of it, the fit and finish of it. I mean, it's a premium bike, so you would expect that, but it's as good as you would expect. All the fixtures, all the fasteners are pretty good. Well, the fasteners aren't great, actually, saying that. <laughs> but, like, the powder-coated finish of stuff, the engine finish, it's very hard-wearing. That, like, silver engine finish, I really like it. So, yeah, there's a lot to like with the fit and finish. It's really good. If you're, buy, if you, if you're looking at buying one of these and you see one which is looking very tatty, then I would say it's had a a very hard life to get in that state because it's a very hard wearing finish on these it's also great to work on this i've serviced this once myself everything is open because of ktm's sort of dirt bike background it all comes apart like a dirt bike you can have the whole bike stripped down in sort of 10 minutes you know that that is a, it's a lovely easy thing to work on this so as a, as a home mechanics option, this is great because it's all very, very easy to work on, which is a big thing. I like to work on my own bikes and to have something which you could take apart and strip down and work on and get to, everything is there. You know, the engine is exposed. You could just get to it, change the filters, drop the oil <laughs> straight away. You haven't got to start removing fairings and the like before you even get to the engine. So I like that. I'd love the whole look of this bike and you know, looking between this and the GSXR, I prefer the look of this. In the garage, this looks better to me. I love this naked, aggressive, all exposed, mechanical look of the Super Duke. I, I love it. I prefer it to a fared super bike, you know, to, to look at. It's just when I ride this, yeah, it's, it's great and I'm probably being a bit of a twat and a spoiled knobhead for having too many cool bikes to ride. If this is my only bike, I think I'd be completely happy. But because I've ridden other bikes, I can see how much easier they are to ride. And also because this bike... I don't really know where I'm going, let's just go this way. Because this bike now has 12,000 miles, it's at that point whereby if I keep it for another season, it's probably going to have 18,000 on it. And it's getting to a point there whereby the mileage is getting a little bit high to get sort of maximum return on your money, if you like. The you know, depreciation is going to really start to set in. And at the moment, these are actually holding their money extremely well. So if I'm going to part with it, now is the time. 
Suzuki have also offered me a fantastic price on the GSXR, an amazing price on the GSXR. Because that bike's had a, you know, it's been used, it's a press bike, it's had some shit. <laughs> but Suzuki's have a three year warranty. The bike's a year and a half old, I can buy that for a super good price from Suzuki directly, keep it for a year and probably flog it and make money on it still. You know, so from a financial point of view, it makes sense for me to chop this in by the GSX-R. I'm, you know, I may get another Super Duke. I'm not ruling out buying another Super Duke. I, I do love the Super Duke. I love the idea of the Super Duke. I love the power of it. It's just the niggles are annoying me a bit. When I'm in the garage and I walk past the ride today, I think the GSX-R is just nicer, it's just smoother. It's still got loads of bags of torque. So this is the thing where well, I can't bother to ride that. It's too much effort. <laughs> So you think, well, why, why have I got it? Let's buy the GSX-R. Don't want, you know, make a bit of money even. <sighs> Gotta be done. My right, chaps. What modifications have we done to this? I think I'll pull over actually, and let's just run through the mods. Show you the shiny bits. Let's come to the pub. Might be a bit early for a pint. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> there she be. The Super Duke. So mods, mods, I'm talking about mods. <clears throat> what have we done to this bike? Well, obviously, we have the carbon die mags on it, which are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we did the carbon bits, we put the triple clamps on. So we put the power parts triple clamps on the bike. I did a carbon headlight, so it's got a carbon backing, carbon fins. Um, this has got the heated grips as well, the, the factory fitted heated grips, which is nice. KTM levers, the power part seat, which I would leave on it, and the tail cow as well. It's got the genuine carbon, genuine carbon, um, a Kropovich carbon Rottweiler airbox. Um, the full system on it, the full Akropovich, the Gillies rear sets, which were again on the bike when I bought it. I'd probably take those off. So, I mean, it's modded. She is modded to the hilt, to be honest. There's nothing left to do. To, the only thing left to do to this, really, is to sort the suspension, I guess, a cartridge kit. That was next on my list if I was going to keep it, but I've reached a point now where she's going. Be brave, chops. You've got to sell it. I love the look of it. It just looks so aggressive. I think the Super Duke 2 does look a bit better. So again, Super Duke 2 is slightly better on styling. I prefer the later headlight to that one, but it's still a good looking mean machine. Ooh, Dimag wheels. Sound of this is a bit special though. It does sound phenomenal. I love the sound of this. Such an angry sounding bike. With that full Akropovich, I can't see, it's on in my eyes. It is uh, it's beautiful. I think the sound is only bettered by the by the Tuono. It can't compete with the gorgeous note of that bike. The reason I bought this bike in the first place was because I bought the GT, the Super Duty GT last year to go to France on, and I loved it. I loved it, I loved the sound of it, I thought I've got to get me one of these and that is why I got rid of the 701 and got this bike in the first place. I knew I probably wouldn't keep it for that long, I knew I just wanted to have one and try one and that's what I've done. I will miss the wheelies from the GSXR does pop up quite nicely but it's, it's not like this. This is a more aggressive machine than the two. The two is more, a smoother, more refined bike than the one. This is Aurora, which originally I wanted that. Yeah, give me that. Right, it's raw, lovely. But after a while, it, it, that does become less appealing. <laughs> don't let my <laughs> my well, don't let my moaning about it put you off buying one though, because it is a fantastic bike. I'm being a bit of an old tart because I've got the option to ride other bikes, other brand new bikes with full electronics and smooth 
inline four engines and it's bound to make the original Super Duke feel a little bit tired and a little bit agricultural I guess is the word in comparison but it's still amazing and if this was my only bike I think I would be more than happy because you just get used to it don't you it's not until you swap with other bikes that the, 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 these little things become apparent and start to irritate you a little bit but don't let me put you off buying one there could be a very nice example there is a very nice example <laughs> coming up for sale very soon